Now for this part, uh, this too is a very good example of how we calculate observed values. We do what is often called the inverse method. So let us just show you how it works. For this question then, we're given that the probability that the weight W lies between 232 and this observed value W equals 0 0.20. And we've got to find this observed value W. Now in the usual way, as I said earlier, I'd encourage you to draw diagrams like this. And we've got to find this value W. So on our sketch, we know that this interval is to the right of 232. It's an interval between 232 and W. And the probability, let's just mark it in, let's put that little observed value W there. The probability of being in this interval is 0 0.20. Let's just shade that in 0 0.20, okay? Put that up there, 0 0.20. Now in the usual way, what I'd want to do is project this line down onto our standardized normal distribution. So that means that in this interval here, this area would be 0 0.20, just the same. And let's just put that this is our value, say, Z1. Now, when we're doing questions like this, We've got to think about what our tables give us in the, in the way of probability. And we've got two tables normally that we can use. We've got these ones called the inverse normal tables. Now if you've got a probability to the right of this Z value, these tables can work out what the Z value would be. If you know that, probability. Or you've got the other types of tables that we generally use where if you know the value of z here to the right of zero it gives you this probability here the probability of being less than z now i'll show you how to use both of these tables to get the answer but let's suppose we're using this set of tables here then clearly this area in here which would correspond to this p-value, it's going to be 0 0.30 because we know that to the right of this central value, the mean, the area's got to be 0 0.5. If we were using these tables, then clearly we would have to go to this side, okay, and we know that this area is 0 0.5. So the area to the left of Z1 is going to be 0 0.70, 0 0.5 plus the 0 0.20. Okay, so what tables do we use? Well, that's up to you, okay? These tables often give us an accurate value, though, if our value is in there. So let's start by saying that if we're using these tables, that is, the probability of W being greater than this observed value equals 0 0.30. And if that's the case, all I've got to do is just look up that probability P here as being 0 0.30. In the tables, though, you most probably have got 0 0.3000. There'll be lots of other values in there as well. And if you look that corresponding Z value up, you'll find that it should say 0 0.5244. There'll be obviously lots of other digits there. So if we're using this method, we can see that the Z value be 0 0.5244. If we're using the other set of tables here, then we'll be doing the probability that W is less than our observed value W, and that would be equal to 0.7 or 0.70. So if we're using these tables, what you've got to look down is in this column here, 
a value close to 0 0.70. And in the tables I was using, I found 0 0.6985, and I also found 0 0.7019. And against the 0.6985, the corresponding Z value is 0.52. And against 0.7019, it was 0.53. So you can see that using these tables is not necessarily as accurate as using these ones. So what value do we use for Z? Well, the one that's closest to 0 0.70. And the one that's closest to 0 0.70 is this value here. So it's going to be 0.52 that we would select for Z. So whether it is 0.52 or 0.5244, where does this get us? Well, we should know that Z, our value down here, is always given by the observed value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we can use that formula now and we can say that from tables, and let's suppose we're just saying that we use these ones, we can see that our Z value, which is Z1 in this case, must be equal to 0.5244, which remember tells us the number of standard deviations we're away from the mean, where 0.5244 standard deviations above the mean for this observed value. Now we just substitute this into here and we therefore have 0.5244 equals the observed value w which we're trying to find okay minus the mean which is 232 over the standard deviation which was 5. And so we just need to rearrange this for w so if you multiply both sides by 5 and add the 232, you get that W equals 232 plus 5 multiplied by 0.5244. And if you work this out, W turns out to be 234.622. And if we round this to, say, three significant figures, then W is going to equal 235 to 3SF. And you should find you get this value even if you use 0.52. Okay, so I hope it's given you some idea then how we can work backwards then through the normal distribution tables here to get an observed value. Okay.